Welcome viewers to another edition of Brave Namibia, where we celebrate both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. In our first clip today, we head to Kietmanshoop, where Jemima Ndebele caught up with entrepreneur and the new owner of the iconic Canyon Hotel, Anita Gertse. Good morning, everybody. I'm Anita Gertse. I'm a 34-year-old entrepreneur, now the new owner of the soon to reopen Kenyan Hotel. I'm quite excited about this new venture. As everybody probably knows, I was in events and catering before. And I always had requests for accommodation for big conferences. And that is actually where the new venture stemmed from. I needed to fill the gap. I needed to serve my clients to the best of my abilities. So I started a guest house first. It was a bit small, still small, but then something else caught my attention and that was the Kenyan Hotel. Whenever I used to drive by here and I said, I need to get this on. So about a year ago, the process started. And last year around October, we could finalize and settle and sign. And we started with renovations. As everybody knows, it was closed for about four or five years. So a lot of work went into the renovations. And I needed to do something that speaks to me in terms of the interior and actually revamping it, giving it my colors and just putting my stamp on it, like one of my friends said the other day. So here we are, open and ready to serve the clients and the public. So we do offer conferencing facilities. We have a coffee shop, we have a bar, we have a restaurant, a 150-seater restaurant. We have a swimming pool, which is almost ready, and then we have 66 rooms in the hotel. I would like to say it is one of the biggest establishments in the south of Namibia. And I'm proud that it is actually a three star currently, but the aim is to get it to a four star, five star in the near future. And I'm optimistic about it and I'm passionate and I'm sure that we will achieve that. I always say my view of success is Others should be able to breathe easier because I'm around. And that is my greatest motivation. If I can uplift others, then I've achieved a lot. So I face challenges a lot, but then I look at the people around me, whether it's my staff, whether it's my family, whether it's friends, whoever relies on me. So I cannot give up even if there are challenges because there are so many people that I need to pull with me. Since we are new in the industry, I think the biggest one is resistance because of the age and you are questioned as to, do you really know what you're doing? And then I think the second one the, is probably the myth of you need to first have been in the hospitality industry to know how to do it. I wasn't in the hospitality industry, but I'm very client focused. And I think many of my clients can agree to that. So there are challenges and we will just have to grow through them and build what we can. I think in the industry and in generally, you need to be a go-getter firstly. You need to believe in what you're doing. Nobody else is going to get your dream and make it happen. You need to do it. You need to be dedicated in this industry. And you need to be an early riser and sleep late. That's, uh, that's what it's about. And you need to believe in the people that are around you. You need to trust your staff. You need to make sure that they feel they are empowered and they can execute whatever task they have. So it's actually a mixture of a lot of things. Okay. Yeah, it's probably one big 
experience and should I say a tragedy, a traumatic experience that I've gone through, which many people are aware of. I survived bullets and I was hospitalized and I was in a wheelchair after that and from the crutches and I was actually told I was never going to walk. And here we are. So I got a second chance at life and I've decided I'm going to grab everything that comes my way with both hands and just make life meaningful. Wherever I go, I should add value. Whatever I do should be done to the best of my abilities. So, yeah, I think that is, I don't want to play victim. And I've told myself I'm not going to sit in a pity party, but I'm going to rise through whatever. And what I've gone through is not going to define where I will end up. And I think this should be an inspiration to many others. We all go through challenges. We all go through experiences, life-changing experiences. That my experience in 2019 was life-changing. I was crucified on media. I was crucified social media, everywhere. But I've decided I'm taking the stones and I'm building something greater. And that is where my entrepreneurship journey is taking me. I was an entrepreneur before the incident, but it was on a small scale. I owned a spa in winter. But then after the incident, I decided I'm not going to sit in a corner and let's go bigger and brighter. My parents were not really business people, but we had a shop at home in a caravan. And my sister and I, were the ones that attended to the shop after school. So I think maybe the, but then when we were doing that, I used to give out a lot of sweets. And I think I still do that. <laughs> I love the freebies. I love giving incentives and so on. But I think maybe the, but I had a full-time career and somewhere along the line, I just decided to go into entrepreneurship. I think the best advice I can give is just the attitude. You don't always have to have the money in the bank, but you can knock on a door. You can decide to break it open. When I started my businesses, I'm actually proud to say it on record. I didn't take any loans to start any of my businesses, even Kenyan Hotel. I started my businesses with small monies that I made from other proceeds. In the case of the events company, and that is how the guest house was started. And then the guest house funded the hotel because we were actually lucky to get a fixed contract from a South African mining company that stayed in the guest house and that money funded here. So it is not always about, I don't have the means. You can create the means. You can sell the fat cook to buy the chicken bag and get the chicken wings added. From the chicken wings, you can go to the full chicken. So if you just want to do something, you will find any way to do it. And we should look at our past and our backgrounds and say, I cannot do it because my parents don't have the collateral to help me get a bank loan. You can do it yourself. And if you only have that attitude, I'm sure you can do a lot. What are some of the special touches that you'd like to continue adding to the, to the hotel to make sure that it stands out? is a gym in itself. We actually have a few plans and I might not be able to divulge all of them, but one thing that we'll be adding to the hotel is a spa. And something I love doing. I love spa treatments and as I said earlier, I had a spa in Ventuk, so that is one thing that we'll be adding. We'll be building a spa where ladies and men can just come unwind and just come rejuvenate. And then the other thing that we're looking at to add is a swimming pool, a bigger one, that will be accessible to the public through a different gate where they have a small kiosk there. That's the second one. And then the third thing that we want to add is a cinema going forward so that we can also just bring in something else. How do you stay motivated in handling all of your business? I think the team that I'm with 
and I need to give credit to my younger brother. He is actually the one that is pushing and kicking and sometimes I decide to take off and want to sleep in and then he would call and say, it's 8.30, you're not yet here. <laughs> so, yeah, it is difficult at times, especially when you face challenges. You just want to pull the blanket over your head and you want to sleep. But like I said earlier, when you look at who's relying on me, who's checking, if I'm not there, how will they feel? Will they feel motivated if I've given up? Yes, so then we just forge forward. Next, we introduced accomplished artist, musician and poet Ebenezer Angula, a multi-talented individual who is also currently pursuing his nursing studies. He chatted to Patricia Kutsia. But the love for helping people has always been there. So I was like, you know, the next best thing is to be a good nurse, right? Yeah. And if I'm going to do something, then I want to, I want to be the best. I want to exactly. do it to the best of my abilities. So I started it and I slowly started to like it because it also allows me to sort of have enough time to do music on the side as well. Okay. Where as compared to medicine, I probably wouldn't have as enough yeah. time. But hey. before we do, we heard about your you know, your nursing experience and how everyone was like, I have a nurse, a celebrity. Now we <laughs> want to find out about the entertainment aspect of it all. Mm. You say that you've been in the music industry for eight years. Mm -hmm. Like, where does this love for music come from? Is it in the family? It's definitely in the family, okay. yes. It is in the family. Um, both my parents used to sing as well and choirs as well, so it didn't come as a surprise when I could sing okay. as well, right? <laughs> um, they didn't really take it any further, but I've, I've loved classical music. They, they put me through musical um, theatre okay. when I was young and I really fell in love with classical music and I guess that's where the love started from. I haven't been in the industry for eight years, I've only been singing for, for eight, eight years. years. Okay. I've only recently started to you know, making through, the you know, making appearances here and here there. Because yeah. I won't lie, I see, I see a lot of venues, events just posting vocal front performing, vocal front, <laughs> if you didn't know that's his stage name the vocal front, mm -hmm. amazing, amazing singer, as we've established. <laughs> and as we've promised, I'm going to ask you to just dazzle us, just like, <laughs> just like for a few seconds, just let, the, let our viewers get a little taste of what can be expected from a vocal front. Um, okay, sure. No pressure. No, <laughs> no pressure, but no it's pressure. always pressure, huh? <laughs> you know, I, as a singer... I don't even know why people say that. Any excuse to sing, like any I always say. Any excuse to sing, I agree. Yeah. Um, just go for it. My go-to favorite is Never Enough oh. from The Greatest Showman. I love that song to bits. Um, and the original singer, Lauren mm -hmm. Ulrich, actually recently released her own version of it and it's just spectacular. Um, so take the floor is yours. Please, <clears throat> please do. Please do indulge. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even warmed up or anything. And it's cold, but let's... Okay. Let's do this. I'm trying to hold my breath let it stay this way can't let this moment end you set off a dream me getting louder now can you hear it echoing take my hand and will you share this with me? Cause darling, 
without you. Wow. Wow. Just a little something. Wow. <laughs> that, that was amazing. <laughs> what was your favorite event? Mm. So if I had to ask you, Vocal Front, mm -hmm. from all of the events in the past few years that you have performed, what event or show stood out to you and why? I don't really have a particular favorite to say, but my the most the, the one I enjoyed the most was the first wedding I ever sang at. Actually, okay. um, I don't know. It was it was a different feel. It was it was my first time singing at a mm. wedding, and I was I was super nervous. <laughs> and and it's an important place to sing. If right? you mess up there, it's, it's, it's like it's, for it's the rest of their life. It's memory, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, but luckily, I knew the the daughter of the the groom. Okay. Um, we went to high school together, so she was like really, really, really nice. And she was like, "No, we can definitely sing together." And it was one of the absolute amazing memories yeah. that I hold very, very dear. And everybody was so sweet. And I don't know, man, it just it struck me different because it was such a homey environment, yeah. and everybody made me feel so welcome. And everybody kept thanking me for singing, and I'm like, "Oh, it's it's." Oh, well, that really voice! Not, not I wouldn't. I couldn't stop saying thank you enough. <laughs> <laughs> It no, I think happened. that was my absolute favorite. But oh, in, wow. in terms of a show, I would say show, 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 show. I mean, you perform at a lot of places. <laughs> so I, I can understand why it would be difficult to pinpoint, to pinpoint one. Exactly. Maybe, maybe the, um, the shows, the poetry shows that I, that I, I get invited to I see you to always at, go to those open mics. Those and are you... incredible. Yeah. And I think we really do look down on open mics. Everybody's like, ah, oh, no, it's, yeah. it's fine. But these poetry shows are amazing, and it's it's a really it's a cultural experience, exactly. and I think I really do enjoy. I also get to create my own music there and showcase it, and I have a little bit of a fan base now. I, oh, if I care I, to say, if you to say that, <laughs> I've also seen that you do perform with a live band every yes, now and then. Yes, every now and then, yeah. Are they? Are you guys a band together, or is it just someone that uh, group that you collaborate with regularly? Well, me and my friends used to be in a band, right? But okay. we don't really do much anymore because everybody's like kind of busy with their own yeah. thing. But here and there I do with, with different bands. We collaborate. Maybe we've got a huge gig and we need, they need a singer or I need yeah. some live elements. Then okay. I just give them a call and, you know, we do what, we, what needs to be done. So I guess awesome. we just tinker around here and there. Because I've heard you guys perform live a few times with the band. It actually sounds really amazing. It sounds so much better. It's, it's, it's a whole different feel when you have a live music. Yeah. I mean, a good singer can turn a back a backtrack into a very good experience. Yes. But I think that live experience allows you to make mistakes and it just creates that sort yes, of exactly. earthy vibe and that sort of like, oh, this is a very humane show, right? So I think, I think live music is very cool. Okay, so I have heard singers say before that if they can play the instruments, they always prefer when they perform to not just stand with the mic but to play the instrument play because the instrument, it makes yeah. it easier for them to mm. flow with the music. Is that the same for you? Oh. Seeing as you play guitar, as you mentioned. <laughs> I, I don't. Make, okay, yes. Yes. Okay, I, okay yes, yes. Um, <laughs> I don't really know how to answer that because... I'm not really that good of a, a guitarist. I, okay. I'm still teaching myself. You know, I'm finding my own. I, I, I have a very good musical ear, so I listen to what I want to to write and yeah. whatnot. But I've only played with the guitar maybe three times now, and it was it was an incredible experience. I definitely do understand the the, the part where you're like it's it's you get into your groove and you, yeah. it's just you and your your instrument, you know. But singing is. It's its own instrument, in my exactly. opinion. So it is. Yeah. It is definitely. Sometimes I'd rather have somebody else playing the guitar, accompanying me. Yeah, and then, then you can, can just live in the moment. You can live in the moment. Are their siblings? Do they also dive into the music industry, entertainment industry? I'm actually industry? an only child. Oh wow! So yeah. you got lucky and blessed. Both parents just decided, like, only child get all the talent. I'm an only child on my mom's side. Okay. And my dad were two. I have an older sister, and okay. she also sings very, very well. Okay. So what does the future look like for Vocal Front specifically? Mm. Um, I definitely, uh, for now I want to finish, get my degree. I want to get a music degree as well, because I want to get an, a performing arts degree. I want to do that. Then I just want to write, you know. I have a really big dream of singing one day with like a, an orchestra yeah. and really getting my name out there and getting such like my sound and everything out there. So hopefully that will happen. Fingers crossed and whatnot. But yeah, that's well, that's what I see myself doing. If you have a dream and you're dedicated to it, then 
you can do it. I totally agree. Yeah. So when I asked what's the future for Vocal Front, are we seeing any plans of traveling, maybe performing internationally? Maybe there's hopes and dreams of collaborating with certain artists? Definitely. Definitely. Like, like the one person <coughs> I'd like to collaborate most is Lisa Ellers, of course. Mm -hmm. She's an incredible classical voice and our voices match. They blend beautifully together. I'd definitely love to do a song or two with her. Um, and Singer, I also really love listening to Anne yeah. Singer's songs here in Namibia. Um, yeah, so I definitely would like to collab with a few people. And maybe internationally, I mean... Definitely. Definitely. Dreams, dreams are valid, right? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So here, um, I don't think we nurture young talent as we, we, as we really do need to. Because in America, people are nurtured and yeah. they have you know, an environment that they can call home, especially artists. But here, it's all about you know, getting a song out there and then getting recognized. There's really no, you can't really have somebody depend on you in, in, in the sense of like, no, she's an artist. I really want to learn from her. Um, people like Lisa Ellers are doing that. I'm, I'm currently under her menteeship, so I'm learning a lot of things from her as well. And I think that's one of the most important things that we need to have here in Namibia. We need to develop, you know, just take culture very seriously. Yeah. Because it's not only about, you know, local music. It's, we have a lot of genres, such as myself, who incorporate the classic, incorporate so many other things that I think we also need to take a look at and really nurture. You know, because we have independent artists, yeah. we do, but we don't really have an organization where all of them, you know, come under one roof and really, you know, the seniors talk to the young people and yeah, whatnot. True. You kind of have yeah. to find your own way and your own footing, otherwise you You're won't really make it. You're just thrown into the world. You know, figure it out yourself. And everybody usually says you need to go abroad because it's really not, yeah. it's not growing it's here, not and unfortunately <laughs> that's true. So maybe in the near future that would change. Mm -hmm. um, that's just a dream I have. Um, okay, so I'm on every social media platform I can think of. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram as Vocal Friend Official. Um, I'm on Facebook as Ebenezer Angula. I'm on TikTok as well as Vocal Front Music. Um, I have a YouTube channel, it's called Vocal Front Official. Uh, I post, you know, gigs, um, just fun moments. Also, my original songs are on there. Okay. Um, my first song titled This Little Love is also on there currently. It's been, I released it a month ago. I also put music on SoundCloud and I'm currently trying to put music on Spotify and those other platforms as okay. well. So maybe in the near future that you know you can find the music on there. But currently it's uh, YouTube, SoundCloud and TikTok you can find. Awesome. Take a load off and tune into another episode of Brave Namavia when we take a look at both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians sharing their stories. Brave Namibia is broadcasted on NTV Saturdays at 6.30pm and 1up2.com and broadcasted on the following Facebook platforms on Wednesday at 5.30pm. Republicane, Algemeine Zeitung, Namibian Sun, and all Namibia Media Holdings pages. For more information, contact the Brave team at brave at synergy.com.na. Brave Namibia, for the ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. Thank you for tuning in today. If you know of someone you feel should feature on our show, please contact us at brave at synergy dot com dot n a